Parlays are super popular among sports bettors. However, the truth is they are sucker bets. This video will prove it and might save you thousands of dollars in the long run. I'm Professor MJ and I teach statistics to university students in Canada. Make sure you watch this video until the end. I'll show you jaw-dropping numbers that will convince you that single wagers are so much better than parlay bets. You will also hear about a mistake made over another mistake that many gamblers do. And I'll share with you the loan situation where doing a parlay could be a smart idea. Let's rock and roll! Part number one, what is a parley bet? First, let me explain what a parley bet is, just in case you don't know it yet. A parley is a single wager that combines two or more bets into one. In order to win your parley, all of your bets must be winners. Those types of bets are popular for one reason. You get a chance to win big money by risking only a small amount. For example, risking $100 on an 8-team parlay may reward you with over $17,000 in potential profit. Wow, that sounds exciting, right? Part number 2. How to calculate expected profit. This is a critical section if you wish to understand the rest of this video. And it also represents basic mathematics that is essential to your long-term success in the sports betting world. When you make a bet, your expected profit is obtained as follows. The potential net gain times the probability of winning minus your potential loss times the probability of losing. Let's do an example. Suppose a guy offers you to bet on the outcome of a dice roll. In other words, you must try to predict whether the dice will show 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6. You clearly have one chance out of 6 to make the correct call, while having a 5 chance out of 6 probability of losing. The conditions are as follows. If you win, the guy will give you $8. If you lose, you must pay him $1. Is this a good bet? Well, let's see what your expected profit is on a single dice roll. Your expected profit is $8 times 1 chance out of 6 minus $1 times 5 chance out of 6. And that equals to plus 50 cents. Since the expected profit is positive, you should accept this proposition. The third part of this video is called How to Interpret Expected Profit. This is where many people get confused. Pay close attention. You may not find it easy to grasp. In the previous example, you can expect to earn a 50 cent profit on each dice roll. Obviously, if you play the game just once, there is no way you can end up with a 50 cent profit exactly. You will either lose $1 or win $8. The expected profit should be viewed as a long-term thing. If you play the game a large number of times, you can expect to earn 50 cents on average per dice roll. For example, suppose the guy who made this proposition is willing to play the game 10,000 times with you. Your total profit after those 10,000 roll dices is expected to be fairly close to 10,000 times 50 cents equals plus $5,000. Maybe you will end up winning $4,800 or $5,100, but it should be close to 5,000. The larger the sample size, 
the more likely you are to have a total profit that's close to its expected value. Part number four, return on investment. You will often hear the term return on investment or ROI in the sports betting world. It gives you a quick indication of how good or bad a bet is. It can be obtained by using the following formula. ROI equals expected profit divided by amount wagered. Let's calculate the ROI in the previous example, the dice roll, shall we? The ROI is equal to 50 cents over $1, which equals to 50%. In this experiment, we were putting $1 at risk since this is how much we were losing in the case of a missed prediction. That's why I have entered $1 as the amount wagered. The ROI indicates what percentage of the amount wagered you can expect to win or lose on the bet under study. In the dice roll example, we are projected to make a profit equivalent to 50% of our betting amount. That's huge! This means that if, instead of putting $1 at risk, we were betting $20, then our expected net gain would become $20 times 50% equals $10 per dice roll, instead of just 50 cents. It's time for section number 5. What is the ROI of a typical single sports wager? When betting against the spread, bettors will usually get minus 110 odds or 1.91 in decimal format. This means that you must put $110 at risk in order to get a potential net gain of 100 bucks. A huge number of people believe they can pick winners against the spread at more than a 50% rate. The reality is that they don't. Suppose you are an average sports better that wins 50% of its wagers against the spread. What is your ROI on a single bet? Let's use the case where you are putting $11 at risk for a potential net gain of 10 bucks. Your expected profit is 10 bucks times 50% minus 11 bucks times 50%. In the end, you get a ROI of minus 4.5%. In other words, you are going to lose, on average, 4.5% of your risk amount on each bet. Again, that is easier to understand by taking a long-term view. Suppose you make one such wager every single day. How much can you expect to lose at the end of a full year? Over 365 days, you are therefore going to bet a grand total of $11 times 365 days equals to 4,015 bucks. Since your ROI is minus 4.5%, you can expect to finish the year with a loss of 180.68 cents. Part number six, what is the ROI of a parlay bet? Now keep in mind the minus 4.5% ROI we just saw on a single sports wager. As you're about to find out, things are going to get much uglier on parlay bets. Throughout this section, we are going to pretend as if you are always betting teams with minus 110 odds or 1.91 in decimal. That will make things easier to understand. Let's start with a two-team parlay, and let's assume you are betting $10. The amount chosen here is irrelevant and won't change the ROI. So what is your potential return on such a bet? The answer is $10 times 1.91 times 1.91 equals 36.44. Once the parlay bet is settled, your bankroll will either decrease by $10 or increase by $26.44. Your probability of winning a two-team parlay is one chance out of four. And obviously, 
your probability of losing the wager is 3 out of 4. Based on those figures, the expected profit is 26.44 times 1 quarter minus $10 times 3 quarter. So in the end, you get a ROI of minus 8.9%. As you can see, your ROI is twice as worse as the one we obtained on single wagers, which was minus 4.5%. This means you are going to lose money twice faster if you do two team parlays instead of single wagers. And again, that's just the tip of the iceberg. If you combine more than two teams on your parlays, it gets even worse. The table on your screen shows the ROI for different types of wagers. The calculations were made using the same logic as before. I sincerely hope those numbers convince you to stop doing parlays. Now let's see what happens if you put $20 at risk every day for a full year. How much are you expected to lose at the end of the year depending on the bet type you are making? Well, the answer is on your screen right now. Those are incredibly convincing numbers. The vital lesson, don't do parlays, buddy. Section number seven, a mistake over another mistake. Ouch. Here is a common question I see posted online on a weekly basis. Quote, I did an eight team parlay and I've won the first seven legs. Should I hedge my bet? End of quote. In case you don't know what hedging means, it involves placing a wager on the opposite side of your original bet. So let's say your 8 bet on your 8 team parlay is on team A, who is about to face team B. Hedging your parlay bet would involve betting team B in order to secure a guaranteed profit. The popular belief is that hedging is a good idea. It is not. Plain and simple. I wrote another article and will make a video out of it that clearly shows why you should not hedge your parlay bets. In summary, doing a parlay bet is a bad idea to start with. Then, many sports bettors make another bad decision by hedging their parlays. In the long run, those two things will ruin you. Plain and simple. Part number 8 the loan situation where a parley bet is a good idea. There is only one specific occasion where I do parlays personally. Whenever I have an account whose bankroll has grown substantially enough to make me worry about being limited or banned by the sportsbook, I do a few parlays. That will make me look like a loser who simply got lucky. Trust me, as soon as you make parlay bets, the bookie tags you as a square better or a casual better. These types of gamblers have a very high chance of losing money in the long run. In the eye of sportsbook managers, such bettors are no threat whatsoever to beat them. The final and ninth part of this video, a piece of advice saving you thousands of dollars. Many people don't realize how staying away from parlay bets would save them a ton of money. As you saw earlier, a person doing three team parlays instead of single bets will lose money three times faster. Someone doing 18 parlays will get into a hole 7 times faster. Do you realize how much parlays are for suckers? No matter how good or bad you are at picking winners, if you stick to single wagers, you will save a lot of cash. 
this piece of advice is worth hundreds or thousands of dollars to many of you in the long run. I hope you liked this video. If so, I invite you to comment below or better yet, to subscribe to this sports betting YouTube channel. Not only do I give away betting lessons, but I also provide daily picks on many sports, including the NFL, Major League Baseball, the NHL and the NBA. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button so that I help you grow your sports betting bankroll as much as possible. I'm Professor MJ, PhD in Statistics. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye bye.